So coming back to cloud robotics, I'm very excited about the potential of the cloud as a way of starting to integrate data from many different sources. And I also want to say that we, we, there's some big questions I have about the future of automated driving. And we hopefully we'll ask questions about that because I, I don't think we're going to see autonomous, fully autonomous cars on the road in the foreseeable future. It's a much harder problem than we think. Even though everybody keeps talking about it as though it's about to happen any day now, I am very skeptical because it's a very hard problem. We need lots of data. And as Pete alluded to earlier, I wrote a, a piece in the, op in the Wall Street Journal recently where I said, look, it's not a matter of us versus the machines. This is the old way of thinking. It's really about us working with machines. And so the new way is to start thinking about diverse groups of people working together with machines. And we have computers have a seat at the table. It's just another form of neuro think another form of thinking. So we have to understand what can they do and use it rather than fearing it. Now, by the way, if we go back 100 years, as we were talking about earlier, actually technology at that time did have an effect on the way we think. So at that time, there was the advances of agriculture. And so there was many new machines coming into to the farms. And rather than just sort of worry about this, people started thinking. And they came up with a very interesting response, which is they changed education. So farm automation led to something called the high school movement. And it was around 1910, all over the country, they started promoting the idea that people should stay in high school. And they built high schools. This is Mount Tam High in Marin, and it was built in 1910. And what happened is that at 1910, only 10% of Americans graduated from high school. But this new curriculum and emphasis and new building resulted that by 1950, 80% of Americans had finished high school. This was, um, technology had changed the way we teach, the way we educate. So I think there's possibility for this in the future. And so what I think we should be thinking about is not fearing this idea of AI, but starting to embrace it, think about it as an opportunity, and combining it with IA, intelligence amplification. These two things can really work together. And we can start to understand what are the strengths and relative benefits of each. And so I think this can change school, schooling. We have an opportunity to really rethink it. So rather than the old way of schooling, which is all about conformity and, and do the right thing and follow the rules, we're now thinking about schooling, or hopefully we will, about teaching creativity. And there the emphasis is on diversity, variety, uh, resistance, and innovation. So what computers and robots and AI are good at is calculations. We're good at understanding. They're good at precision. We're good at having purpose. They're good at objectivity, and we have passion. So these are the things that humans are very good at. And we need to recognize and appreciate and strengthen them. So the idea that what we do is we have curiosity, creativity, empathy. These are human skills, and we, are, we can teach them. We can, we can enhance them in the future. Mm -hmm.